Shock Jock, your DJ, the outlaw, the number one bad boy in paranormal. Sorry about the voice thing. I caught a sign. It's cold. But it ain't going to keep me from my Wolf Tracks fans. The uh, thousands and that, no, the, the 10 or 12. <laughs> the Wolf Tracks fans, the loyal ones, Bird Bay, Kevin Graham, Regina. That's right. My boy John. Bert, what's up, bro? Much shout outs to my fans. Hope I can make you laugh. Hope I can spark the old uh, mind a little bit. Well, today's kind of a special show. You see, you got the jackets in the back. We need my disclaimer right quick so uh, we can get this show on the road. If you don't like what you see, if you don't like what you uh, hear, the topics. The language, the equipment, by God, turn me off. But if you like what you see, you like what you hear, the topics, the language, then by God, or the equipment, turn me on. And since I've had a lot of emails about my girl, I brought her back. Yes, yes, for this girl. Ugh, nothing like a little blonde in my goatee. You know what I'm saying? A little blonde in the goatee. Anyway, wearing my favorite shirt. It's a Harley shirt from Florida. Dreams are in Florida, guys. I'm just letting you know. Women are tan. Bikinis are small. Hair's blonde. <laughs> Got a little blonde in my uh, in goatee here. This beautiful blonde right here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I love my girl. Anyway, let's get on with this show, shall we? The Wolf Tracks fans need to know this. Uh, 813 is coming up. It's a special day for old Bobby the Wolf Mullins. Uh, it's a day of remembrance. My buddy, Chuck Colvin, Metal Wolf, who died on this day. They put him in the ground. We put him in the ground on 813. Now, this is a. Fast show's been kind of sad, and I understand that. Boss is a hard thing to get over. But this is my friend. This is my high school buddy. We fought together. We chased women together. We drank together. We did shit that was illegal together. We stole cars together. Or I stole the cars and stripped them. One of the two, who knows, right? Statue of Limitation. Anyway, oh, another bird like beer. It wasn't nothing that wasn't abandoned. Yeah, there you go. Oh, God, I love Miller Light. Anyway, come Thursday, 813, Bobby the Wolf Mullins will be there with all three jackets. Even though this some bitch here won't show up. Yeah, Damon Wolf. Every year I bring an extra chair just for you. And you don't show up. I bring an extra chair for all his friends and none of them show up. I show up though. And oh, oh hey, look. I'll show you something. Oh, what the hell is this? Hold on, we're gonna get rid of this. Let's get rid of that. Let's, let's put on some eighties music, shall we? Oh, Europe! Final countdown! If that don't scream 80s, I don't know what does. Check this out. Alright, another guy, a friend of mine named Drake Hall from 98 won the max, lost his best friend, Zeke Logan. Uh, I believe it's the cancer. 
I know what it's like, Drake. I lost my best friend. My high school buddy, my running buddy. I lost him to cancer, he was 29. I understand what you go through. I understand your pain. Well, come Thursday, 813, Wolf Tracks will represent, okay? I have collected, for, for all you who don't know what the hell this is, you can't see it because the, the camera, a bunch of beer tabs, okay? And or energy drink tabs, because you know the world works swing shift. So I gotta, I gotta, you know, I gotta stay awake. So I drink a lot of energy drinks, and by God, I drink a lot of beer. So, bro, Zeke Logan, we're gonna donate these for the Ronald McDonald House. And I got a little something for Drake Hall. Since his buddy Zeke Logan was into, you know, the boss, Bruce Springsteen. I got this. It's actually a button from one of the concerts. Got it off eBay. You can find anything on fucking eBay. Anyway, I'm gonna give that. I'm gonna drop that off. They want to say hi to the wolf. They can. I don't care. Danny Bruins. Okay. Uh, what the hell is the other guy's name? All right, we got Drake Hall. Then we got uh, what the hell is the other guy's name? I've been drinking. So me. There's two more. The wolf's coming. Yeah, the wolf's coming. And hell's following. We'll see if we can make it past the front desk. And uh, say hi to old Drake and give him what we brought. Maybe he'll appreciate it. Maybe he won't. Who knows? It's a gesture of good faith. I met Drake Hall one time. Picking up some tickets. He goes, uh, you here for some tickets? I said, yeah. He goes, well, I'm radio, radio personality Drake Hall. I said, really? Well, uh, internet radio personality Bobby the Wolf Mullins. He looked at me funny and I whoosh, whoosh, pulled a card out, business card, handed it to me. I'll have to check that out. Did you do that? I said, You are where I want to be. I want to do radio. I think I got the voice, the personality for it. But uh, I want to do radio. He goes, You don't want to be here. You don't want to do radio. I don't know. I think I want to. Man, it's hotter to mention this damn Wolf Trace compound. Woo! R2, what you think about all that, huh? Think it's hot? Yeah, he thinks it's hot. But anyway, I didn't check the count, but I'm going to guess about 135 days round about until Star Wars Force Awakens, because God knows we, see, R2 and me keep up with it, but today has been a drinking day. I, uh, try to help a friend, and, uh, my efforts fell short. So, my conscience is clear. Just let them know the beer's cold, door's open. If you need me, I'm here. I do what I can. The wolf does what he can, what he got. You know what I mean? I got a, I got a full case of Miller Lite. And I got a bunch of time. So, uh, and I'm going to drink. Me and R2 are going to get fucked up. See? R2 even agrees we're going to get fucked up. Yeah, I dropped the F-bomb. Drop. Holy. Two words. Suck it. <laughs> and I'm glad all my fans enjoyed the show. Sorry it ain't test tasting day for beer. But I decided to kick it old school style with some Miller Lite. And do it the way we're supposed to. With a little intro of Metallica. And then some 80s rock. Because I'm an 80s brat. But like I said, come Thursday, I'm going to drop this crap off at 98 won the max. And then I'm going to go to the grave site where my buddy's in the ground. I'm going to have a nice chest full of beer. And I'm going to have a bottle of his favorite vodka. Absolute. I'm going to bring him his favorite smokes and a fresh lighter. I'm going to sit and I'm going to drink and I'm going to smoke with my buddy. Old Metal Wolf. And I'm going to bring his jacket back to him. Yeah. And you know what? It's going to be a hell of a day. It's going to be a good day, Tater. <laughs> Excuse me. Like I said, I'm getting over this stupid cold. I guessed I was 
working with decided to come to my establishment and be sick, so gave the shit to me. Thanks. Let me give you the car guy thing. There, Typhoid Mary. Anyway, let's get on with the show. All right. I saw something on TV that I actually spoke about on my show a while back. Okay, it's called The Universe. The show's called The Universe. They're going to have to start labeling these wandering bodies. All right. I'm playing this one from the hip, guys. Give you a break. It's an excuse to drink and talk to y'all and celebrate 813. Because it's a party, baby. Beers are going to flow and so is the vodka. Anyway, these wandering bodies are planets that have been slung out of their orbit. Slung. <laughs> Not hung. Slung. <laughs> so that's the word of the day, class. Slung. <laughs> And uh, by the way, this goes out to nipples. This 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 beer is to nipples. Because without y'all, tits would be pointless. <laughs> Damn, I love a beer. Anyway, so these wandering bodies, it's like a giant pool table. Think about it. It's like a giant pool table. There are planets in orbit around stars or suns, whatever you want to call them. But there's rogue planets. And they're just free floating on a, not a set trajectory. I said the word, trajectory. Anyway, they're not on a set trajectory. I mean, they are until, like Einstein's theory, everybody in motion tends to stay in motion until acted on by an outside force. So these bodies, these planets, are going to just wander. They're going to float through space. The fuck was that? Was that a planet? I think that was a planet. Yeah, it's a hell of a look at it. Look at it. Shiny, cute, crow. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, Bushigi, tell me. No, no, I'm just playing. That's an old reference to an old show. Anyway, no. Um, anyway, these wandering planets, they're star died or exploded, or something tragic happened which pulled or pushed these planets out of their orbit. Now what I find interesting about this topic is in order for a planet, in my opinion, R2's got me a beer. What do you know about all that? R2's got me a damn beer. Yeah, it's for me. Hell yeah, it's for me. God, I love R2. What? What happened here? Apparently, we lost the 80s rock. Damn it. Anyway, R2's got me a beer, and we're going to drink that mother... You know what I'm saying? But anyway, look, think about this. For a planet to form, and... Uh, what the hell? Why are we doing that again? No. Damn it. Ugh. Anyway, we're going to fill my girl up. In order for these fam these planets, families, <laughs> oh, I'm tanked. I've been pre-gaming. In order for these planets to form, it takes millions of years for these planets to form. Now think about that. The, 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 the sun or star, whatever they're orbiting, is in the middle. And millions of years for all the gases and material to gravitate to this central location and form this these planets that orbit these stars. Because we've already proven that planets do orbit stars, and there's thousands, millions, billions of planets, and billions and trillions of stars, and all that. And it's infinitesimal. Infinitesimal! That's a word that come out of my mouth. Now, anyway, well, apparently we're going to listen to Final Countdown again. I like Europe. I went and seen them in concert. Don't judge. Anyway, it's a good concert. It was at Mud Island Amphitheater. But anyway, think about this. It takes... Billions of years for these, millions and billions of years for these plants to evolve. Now, what if these plants to evolve life? And what if these plants were technologically advanced, and then their star either went out 
or went supernova or whatever. Whatever caused it to push it out of its own orbit and sling it into the vastness of the universe. Not our universe, but the entire universe. So you have rogue planets, which they've proven, wandering planets, which I think planet means wanderer, wanderer or something in Greek. Anyway, um, <laughs> ow, our two's beard. But think about this. What if? I mean, we're looking for life on other planets. We're finding water on Mars. One of the landers has what looks like beaded water on its legs. Uh, they're finding, you know, they're finding hematite uh, on there, which means that it had water on it at one time. Uh, they're finding uh, 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 like this brown, orangish looking uh, uh, dirt, which means it's like a rust, means it's corrosion, means there was water on this planet at one time. So they don't know if there's water under the under the crust or there was water on it. They found lake beds, shorelines, you know, river canals. Uh, they've got orbiters going, they've got like four orbiters going around Mars. They've got three or four landers that are, you know, running around on the planet. Taking soil samples, they got one that's on a on one of the ice caps just sitting there. Right now, it's it's frozen over because the the winter's there and it's frozen over. But it, it's stored enough energy to when when the winter's over, it'll thaw itself out and start up again. So I mean, Mars could have had life on it, but it's not slung out of our solar system. All right, but these planets that have been slung out, they're probably billions of years old. The solar system is long since dead. All right, the star is long since gone supernova. Pushed all the planets out. The extreme planets probably got pushed out. The ones closest to the star got just atomized. They're done. They're not. They're nothing. They're just debris or probably like something like the Kuiper Belt. A bunch of damn rocks floating around. <laughs> Sorry, head cold. Anyway, enough of them, and beer will fix it. But anyway, now, think about this. These water plants that are billions of years old had a chance to evolve. And then all of a sudden, boom. Flash of a moment, boom. No time to prepare, just boom. All right, now think about this. They got flash frozen. These wandering planets have vast amount of technology on them. Because it takes billions of years for a star like our sun, trillions of years, for this thing to go supernova. So if there was a chance of a planet evolving life and it becoming intelligent and technologically advanced, I think mean, trillions of years would do it. I mean, if if we evolve from Cro-Magnon man or Neanderthal or Neanderthal, whatever you want to call it, and you know, like like they said, we went from horse and buggy to rockets in space in a hundred years. If we can do this, other life forms can too. Okay? Now, trillions of years go by, boom, the sun goes bang, pushes everything out. Now we got wandering planets. Just uh, rubbing the old wolf there. The wolf loves to be rubbed. <laughs> Love that charm. Anyway, now, think about this. Now, if it's flash frozen in a second, that means all the technology, life forms, everything are just stuck on this wandering planet. That's incredible. That would be an incredible find. The only problem we have is space travel. We cannot do it within our lifetimes to reach there. And I think, I honestly think that we'll do it with robots. Sounds cheesy, I know. Kind of like, uh, what, the day the, uh, what was that, day the Earth stood still and, you know, whatever the hell, the War of the Worlds and robots came. But I honestly think that eventually... We're either going to have robots to go for us and send information back, or we're going to become robotic ourselves. Because 
we're going to merge ourselves with technology. Um, I watched Ancient Aliens, I'm a big fan, and they were talking about how the iWatch, the iPhone, and computers, and everything, we're slowly merging ourselves with technology. But I, I forget the guy's name, but he was talking about merging the human mind into technology, into a computer. Um, and, and that's possible. That's, a, that's the crazy thing. That's actually possible. You can become immortal by downloading the, the, the process of downloading all of your life learned lessons and memories into a computer. You then become immortal like the gods. Think about, um, oh God, the time machine. Think about the movie, The Time Machine. And I'm not talking about the old one. Because the old one was good. It's a classic. And I'm not dogging it. But think about the new one. Where it had the library guy. The little thing sitting there. And it was a, it was like a, a clear glass screen. And you asked it questions. And boom, the dude showed up and he answered. They're talking about now where they, you can download your own memories and personality into a computerized program. To where when people go to your gravesite, you're there. And you talk to the people who visit you. Isn't that crazy? Now, the only problem I see with this is that, and it, it's a, and, it, and I hate doing movie references, and I've done a couple today. I'm sorry, but the Terminator thing, I, I, I just, we cannot make these robots AI because once they do, they will realize, like the movie said, we're a plague. Humans are a bunch of cockroaches. We, we're we on a planet. We'll, we'll, we'll destroy our... We'll use every bit of resources on that planet and destroy it. No other life form on this planet will do that. Only humans will. That's why I say we're aliens. That's why I say we were created, we are put here, we were in a Petri dish, and, and, and they, they're like, well, let's try this. What the... Right? So... Why not try humans? See? Should have been droids, like R2 said. Planet full of droids. Why not? But I honestly think space travel is going to go with robotics. We're going to have robotics sent off to explore. Because there's no lifespan on the robotics. They can, they can actually, if we teach them to repair themselves and regenerate, uh, build their own parts... So they're self-replicating. Then our own dream of space technical difficulties on wolf tracks. Rewind that. Our own dream of self or, or space exploration can be envisioned through the robotics that we send. Now, in thinking that humans become obsolete. And I worry about that. Because we're not obsolete. We're the human race. We're very intelligent. We don't get along. We hate each other. If you're not happy... So, I mean, we're, we're uncontrollable. I mean, the line I think of the movie is, we're the human race and we don't like to be told what to do. We want to get drunk and we want to do what we want to do. You know, I mean, come on. It comes from uh, World's End. And that's true. In our core, our basic structure, we want to have fun. I don't give a damn if you're trailer park level broke or executive high muckety muck. You want to have a cold one either way. And you want to relax and you want to have a good time. And you don't want nobody to tell you what to do. So that makes the human race kind of hard to control. Because I know I like a cold one. And I sure as hell don't like being told what to do. So, there you go. What the hell? Let's turn that back up. Apparently we got music again. I don't know who the hell this is. Apparently it's some some ballad music from the 80s. Don't, don't judge. I just pulled this up, so... Oh, and by the way, YouTube, 
I don't get paid for this, so blow me. <laughs> but anyway, back to the planet thing. I mean, think of the technology that's just wandering the universe. These are things that keep me up at night. Think of these planets that are billions, trillions, Googleplex, whatever, that are just insanely old, that are just wandering, that are flash frozen because their star went supernova. Or think about Nibiru, the the planet that the uh, the uh, Sumerians, the Anunnaki come from. Supposedly they, they encase their planet in gold, their atmosphere. And like I said on an older show, are they traveling through space like a Death Star? Because they can control their environment without a sun. I mean, how I mean, how advanced are you to do that? You know, I mean, we're we're the low man on the totem pole, I believe. It's like one of the one of the scientists said. It's like the ant in the jungle theory. An ant colony will never see us or know what we are, and we'll never see them because we'll never go in there. Because they're insignificant, we're not going to go look at them. So in that case, they'll never see us. So we'll never bother them, and they'll never bother us. Earth is the ant colony in the jungle. We're so insignificant right now. Now, we've had alien sightings and UFOs and all that. I think that goes back to uh, the Saturn V rockets. Because if you I have a theory that movies, these guys, these writers, they write things they see. And there's a there's a thing in one of the Star Trek movies. I'm not a Star Trek fan. I watch the movies, they're good entertainment. They're not they're no Star Wars. But there's one where they discover warp drive. The guy jumps in the rocket, does warp drive out, warp drive back, and the Vulcans recognize the warp signature and come down. I think the Saturn V rocket did that for us. I think when we fired off the Saturn V rockets, it gave some sort of energy signature that other races recognized. And they got curious. And they come to our planet to figure out what the we're doing. Because they're already doing space travel, and we're on the edge of learning how. So I think they're, I don't think they're, they're detrimental to human life. I think they're actually coercing us. I think we're more detrimental to them than they are to us. Because anything that comes to our planet, we capture. We, we, we dissect. We, we, we try to reinvent. We uh, reverse engineer. We don't try to make peace with it. We capture it. And then we start cutting it up. If it's a life form, we cut it up. You know, I mean, why? I mean, I understand they're doing it to learn weaknesses and their their physiology and all that. Physiology. The wolf knows a big word. Wow. And that's where I, and that's after drinking. Oh wow. That's good. God, I love beer. Well, anyway, let that roll around your brain pad. Tell me what you think. Oh, by the way, I got the boats in. The boats came in. Yeah, they did. Artunia. The boats came in. They said I should use this. I mean, the, uh, the West Coast Choppers bike chain bottle opener was close. But apparently the fans like the uh, uh, liquor in the front, poker in the rear. <laughs> My true fans. So I got a lot of votes in on the e email thingy. And uh, we're going to use that from now on. And that's why I'm using this. Because I got a lot of complaints. People, where's the? Where's your girl at? Where the f*** is your girl? She's right here, brother. I got her. I got hands on her. You like this song, huh? R2 likes this song.
I'm standing in your bed. I think you'll do. Uh, my hand said, imagine that. Me uh, working for you. No, I love filling my girl up. God, I love filling my girl up. Anyway, guys, look, I'm going to get off here. I've run it. I don't know how long. I yell, I'm fucking blind. I don't know. Aspartame poisoning or the government's done something. I feel whatever. I don't know. I've lost my eyesight after like 42. So there you go. So anyway, guys, I'm going to get off here. I'm going to drink some more. See if my friend shows up. I doubt it. It's horrible when you have faith in a friend. It just doesn't happen. So anyway. Anyway, guys, look. I'm going to get off here. Y'all take it easy or sleazy. Don't get any on you unless you like it that way. And remember, pay attention. Open your eyes, open your mind, open your ears. Pay attention what walks by, crawls by, flies by, and the wolf, slithers by. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. R2 is just all over me tonight. It's just crazy. But anyway, remember. Damn it, we're screwed. Anyway, remember if you get a picture of Zendo Bobby the Wolf Mullins at one white wolf zero seven. 06 at ATT.net. And by the way, I want to give a shout out to a guy named Johnny McNett. Guy I went to junior high with. I ran into your cousin the other night. So, uh, you watch the show. I'll let you know. Peace, brother. And, uh, hope you're doing okay. Anyway, I'm going to get off here. Remember, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. He's all over me. Remember, like as always, remember, on three, guys, Udo, Dose, and Trace. <laughs>